Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about how to isolate and find what is making noise in a valve setup. There's a lot of moving parts in a, in a linkage paddle, blah, blah, blah. For instance, on this instrument, we have an adjustable lever right here. We have an adjustable saddle. We also have the saddle itself that this hinges on. We have an adjustable uh, uh, lever arm, I don't know what you would call that, here, that can also move. We have mini ball here, we have the, the linkage that holds the mini ball ends together, we have another mini ball, and then we have the stop arm, and then we have the valve with bearings at both ends. It's like, let's say, I can't do math very well, that's about 25 things that can move. Um, don't worry about this, this is obviously the second valve lever, and it has nothing to do with this today, it's just in the way. Um, but something is making noise here, right? We have normal bumper noise, but there's something a little bit higher pitched, a little more uh, like metal on metal that I can hear and I can feel when I press this valve. What is that? How do we find out what it is? Well, it's really easy. You're gonna hold the stop arm, which is the guy attached to the end of the valve here on the spindle. You're gonna hold that in place and then move the lever. Now, oh, what's that? This screw is loose. Basically, you want all of the action of this to go directly into the valve. And if anything on that path is loose or not lubricated, we'll talk about that in a moment, it's going to make noise because it's wasting energy. So, off camera, I will tighten that down. And of course, I'm only tightening things to be hand tight. We're not going any farther than you think. Just like a little extra turn. So now if I hold this, nothing in this chain, I'm moving a lever, it's hard to see because nothing really moves. Nothing in this chain, even though there's so many moving parts, is moving. And therefore, there's only bumper noise. And on this horn, I probably could get quieter bumpers and eliminate a lot of that noise. Um, it doesn't bother me. Uh, the bumper noise is not a big deal. I don't like there to be slop anywhere in this chain. And on this horn, there are a lot, of, a lot of spots where you can get slop and ruin the effect of the valve. That is now basically at 100%. So we learned one thing, uh, hold, hold this where it is. So if you don't find anything when you do it here, also hold the bumper, um, the stop arm in the activated position and do the same thing. It's good to do both or maybe in the middle somewhere and feel what is moving. Even now with everything tight, there's just, there's like, you know, a, thousand, a thousandth of an inch of movement before anything happens. Um, let's go on to the next thing. So here we have Yamaha bass trombone. Um, not all linkage is the same, of course. This has got these like barrel style linkages where it's got a sleeve over a, a, like a barrel with a screw on the end. And these are adjustable. If you tighten them too far, the whole linkage doesn't move. Um, and that's not a good thing, of course. Now this makes some noise, and I feel like the noise is not entirely aligned with the bumper noise. We hear the kind of thud of hitting the bumper, but there's a more extra mechanical noise in there like we felt before. So, same thing, we're gonna hold the stop arm in place and move the lever, and we hear that noise. Now we look closely, you can see this, oop, I don't know where my finger is, this is adjustable. This is a little collar that screws in and out, and so we want this uh, mini ball end, sorry, that's out of focus. We want that to be flat uh, against this. We'll screw that in so it's finger tight up against the, the end here. And now there is no slop in this linkage. Is it silent? No, but we're missing that metal on metal linkage noise that is just wasting energy. And of course, this is a little louder because this valve is completely dry. I got toasted in the bed of my truck, so now there's nothing on it. Moving on, there's one more major culprit of valve noise. I have a uh, no good um, Olsen axial here, the uh, whatever this is, uh, port, there we go, um, was not completely finished correctly, so it can't be used. And it's missing bearings. Uh, there are bar ball bearings and real versions of this, but um, it works for the purposes of this. 
if all of the linkage is completely good, none of it makes noise, but there's still something moving, the valve itself can be at play. Now this makes a bunch of noise and moves a lot because there are no bearings. There should be ball bearing here and a ball bearing inside the end of this. Um, but a really bad valve will feel similar. So what you can do is take off or even just feel the stop arm here and just wiggle it by itself. You can kind of isolate it from everything else and just wiggle it up and down, move it side to side. The direction it's not supposed to move, right? It's supposed to move this way. It's not supposed to move this way or any other direction, like uh, side to side without rotating, for instance. Ah, this is very hard to show with all these stupid levers in the way. Um, it should not move in any direction except that. And of course, this one doesn't, feels great. This, since there are no bearings, and, um, can move in all sorts of directions. And that will make noise because, of course, it's not supposed to move in that direction and you're wasting energy. And of course, the valve will not seal. It'll play like crap. That'll be another indication. But that'll be a reason that the, uh, the valve makes noise. So that's the last culprit. That's the worst culprit. You don't want to have a bad valve. Um, that will be a very hard thing to fix. Of course, with axles, sometimes it's simple as tightening down the lock ring just a little more and then things will work or actually loosening it a little bit so the, the valve can move. So let's talk about what things need to be tight and what things need to be oiled. So every single moving part, and on this there are basically, you know, there are lots of parts that can move, these adjustable parts for instance. They don't need to be lubed because they are not moving parts. They're adjustable, but they don't move necessarily all the time. So in this, we want to lube the linkage here um, at the saddle uh, for the lever and for that I will use uh, ultra pure red which is linkage lever and key oil and I'll just put that on the ends I'll guess I, I'll get this out I'll put that on the ends kind of up here and down here this one actually doesn't need a whole lot of lube because it has little teeny ball bearings on the uh, the saddle and then of course we have the uh, mini balls themselves they do a lot of work and I will oil both sides. So there's the top side right there. There's the top side right here. And then of course the other side as well. It's very hard to do in camera. Do that and where did I lost it there? There we go. This is very difficult to do on camera. The bottom side of that. <clears throat> very important that all the mini balls are lube because these take a lot of use, a lot of strain. They're really small parts and it's all metal on metal. Even the plastic ones, like on old fair horns, you need to lube them because they will take a hit after a while. And then of course the spindle of the valve. This one again, not super important and I won't use this oil. That's the wrong oil. Ignore that. I use instead uh, ultra pure blue light bearing oil a little child proof cap and I put that in here Ta -da. so that the spindle is oiled and already that's making less noise than it was before <laughs> and this is actually in pretty good shape already so let's see what we do on a rotor we do similar things right every moving part so on this we have a saddle on this side and I'm going to with the red oil because this is heavy it should last <clears throat> a nice long time oil at the top oil at the bottom give it a couple moves and I will wipe this down to get off the excess on the outside and on the other side we only have one mini ball and we'll get both sides of that kind of just squeeze it in the back there there we go and then on Yamaha, since they have these barrel style linkages on the older horns, and actually I think they're on Zenos as well, um, sometimes I'll unscrew these a little bit so that they can move and then I'll put some oil in there. I'm not gonna do that right now. And then of course we have the spindle on this side. So I'll put some bearing oil in there. Give that a couple moves. Again, these valves are pretty dry. And then since this is a rotor, I wanna do the other side as well and do this side of the spindle. Just a little bit of bearing, there we go. And put the cap back on. Every single moving part 
There we go. Work that in. Every single moving part on a valve, ah, excuse me, needs to have lube. So obviously the valve itself needs to have lube. I use valve oil for that. All the little moving parts need oil. Everything needs to be hand tight, finger tight, whatever you want to call it. Um, use the correct tools. <clears throat> this uses, or this is what I would use on a stop arm, and stop arms are a culprit for making noise on Edwards and stuff like that. The stop arms like to come off. Everything needs to be lubed. Everything needs to be finger tight. And if that doesn't do it, then something, and a lot of times the culprit is the saddle on older horns, something is probably worn out. And there's not really much you can do outside of replacing parts. But if you have a newer horn and it's still making noise, those are the culprits. Find the problems, find what's loose, tighten it up, and oil it. That's all I got for today. Bye-bye.